Late the following day, two full days after her defilement, Charlotte finally awoke from her unconscious condition. Hearing noises on the grounds beneath the bedroom window, she looked over and saw Lady Schwellenberg asleep in a chair, having exhausted herself watching over her. The princess asked God for the strength to move from the bed so she could see the commotion. Struggling to get to her feet, she inched to the window, praying not to vomit before getting there. But upon looking out, the scene on the lawn beneath her uncoiled every fibre of her being. John Baptiste Beckford was tied to the whipping post. His feet were chained, and his hands shackled above his head. Wilhelm mercilessly flogged him with his bullwhip, as Charlotte's brothers, Christiana, Aunt Albertina, the Duchess, and Lena, in a state of hysterics, looked on. The sight was unbearable. John winced from pain. Each lash left an open slice of bloody flesh, and each lash caused every servant watching this sadistic punishment to flinch in despair. Whoop! John would cry out. Whoop! More blood-curdling screams. You black bastard! Wilhelm yelled. I'll teach you to touch a royal woman again! Then Charlotte heard the bullwhip, and John screams until she couldn't take it. John was blamed for her violation, yet the true transgressor stood as his accuser, administering the punishment. God! Oh, God, stop! He did not do it! He did not do it! Charlotte cried out, beating at the window to get someone's attention. Make them stop! Make them stop! But no one could hear her from the upstairs window, and it would not budge as she tried in vain to open it. Then Charlotte heard, I'll skin you alive! Lena cried out. Finally, Lady Schwellenberg stirred awake. When she saw the princess at the window, she panicked. Your Highness, what are you doing? You should not be out of bed. She leapt from her chair and tried to pull Charlotte away, but the girl found strength from some unknown source and pushed her lady away. They both fell to the floor as Charlotte heard a barrage of cursing and verbal confrontation. She knew John was being brave, but surely he was terrified and in pain. But Wilhelm neither heard nor cared. Suddenly, a coil of fever and nightmares raged inside Charlotte. Her senses became clouded until she began to feel Wilhelm's bullwhip herself. She saw her own flesh rip open and bleed. Her screams obliterated reason as she envisioned her brothers, father, sister, mother, aunts, uncles and grandparents standing with Lena and every other Moor born under the African sun, unjustly forced into secrecy, degradation or denial, take turns with a bullwhip as she was shackled, whipped and beaten like John. All the sickening imagery and metaphors forced a pillow over Charlotte's head, and her tears soaked through to the sheets, but did nothing to blind her visions. It had to stop. She had to stop it. It had to be over. The whimpering of John's tribulations followed a dreadful silence, and Charlotte begged God to let her die that day. But she knew she would not. She knew as surely as she had been born a blue-blooded Frederick, she would only awaken tomorrow and be forced into the pretense of all is well at Palace Miro. Charlotte had to stop this cruelty. She pushed Lady Schwellenberg away and dragged herself up and out of her chamber door. She had just made it to the landing of the second floor stairs. Hold on, John, I'm coming, she said, managing to walk down three steps without pain. I'll tell them the truth. I'll tell them. It was Wilhelm. It was Wilhelm. It was Wilhelm. But the world suddenly spun around her. The walls, stairs and banister became one enormous blurred jumble, and her footing was uncertain. With one false move, she collapsed headfirst down the stairs like a rag doll, reeling, hurling, tumbling, and striking every step, until all there was left was total darkness, dead silence, and the twisted wreckage of her own body.